Yan LeCun recently delivered one of the most thought-provoking talks on artificial intelligence, offering a glimpse into the future of AI and how we might actually achieve AGI artificial general intelligence. He lays out his vision for AGI timelines, the architectural breakthroughs needed, and what's next for AI-powered assistance. It's a conversation that could shape the trajectory of AI development. Before we dive into the deep stuff, don't forget to like and subscribe to AI Gridlock for the latest on cutting-edge AI development. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, human-level AI, or how do we get there, and uh, how we are not going to get there as well. So first of all, we do need human-level AI because uh, the future, there is a future in which most of us will be wearing smart glasses or wearing other types of devices and we'll be talking to them and they will, those systems will host assistants, uh, maybe not just one, maybe a whole collection of them. And what that will cause is that all of us will have basically a staff of kind of smart virtual people working for us. Um, so it's like everybody would be a boss. Lacoon highlights the critical elements that are still missing from today's systems, things like persistent memory and other advanced features. These capabilities are essential stepping stones toward creating truly intelligent systems, whether you call that AGI or even AC artificial superintelligence. Lacoon paints a picture of what will be the baseline requirements for future AI systems capable of extraordinary feats. Exciting stuff, right? Just not of real humans. Um, and we need to build this uh, for basically amplifying human intelligence and, you know, making people more creative, more productive and everything. Um, but for this, we need machines that understand the world, they can remember things that, you know, have intuition, have uh, common sense, uh, things that can reason and plan to the same level as humans. And despite what you might have heard from, you know, some of the most enthusiastic people, current AI systems are not capable of any of this. Um, so that's what we need, systems that learn to basically model the world, have mental models of how the world works. Um, and, and you know, every animal has one such model. Uh, your cat certainly has one that's more sophisticated than any AI system ever built or ever devised. Uh, systems that have persistent memory, which current LLMs don't have. Systems that can plan complex action sequences which is not possible with LLMs today, and systems that are controllable and safe. Um, so I'm going to be proposing an architecture for this uh, it's called, that I call Objective Driven AI. I, I wrote kind of a vision paper about this uh, that I posted about three years ago. And uh, uh, a lot of people at FAIR are basically working towards implementing that plan. Uh, FAIR used to have a combination of, you know, kind of long-term blue sky research and kind of more applied uh, projects. Um, but, but Meta, a year and a half ago, created a, a product division called GenAI, focused on AI products, um, and they do applied R&D, so now FAIR has been sort of redirected towards the longer, start, the longer term, next generation AI system. We don't do it at any speed. Um, Up next, Yan LeCun dives into a critical point, something we're fundamentally missing in the journey toward advanced AI. He points out that we keep bumping up against more of X paradox, you know, the idea that tasks which seem easy and intuitive for humans are incredibly tough for computers to handle. Meanwhile, tasks like crunching complex math and performing advanced calculations, things that machines do with ease, are areas where humans often struggle. Lacoon argues that to overcome this paradox, we need to rethink our approach. It's not just about brute force computing anymore, it's about tackling these challenges with fresh, innovative methods. If we crack this, we could unlock a new frontier of AI capabilities. Um. And we're, we're still missing something big to reach human-level intelligence. Um, and I'm not necessarily talking about human-level intelligence here, but even, you know, your cat or your dog can do amazing feats that are still completely out of reach of current uh, AI systems. Uh, how is it that any 10-year-old can learn to clear up the dinner table and fill up the dishwasher? And the 10-year-old can learn this in one shot, right? There's no need to practice or anything. 17-year-old um, can learn to drive a car in about 20 hours of practice. We still don't have level 5 self-driving cars. And we certainly don't have household robots that can clear up the dinner table and fill up the dishwasher. Um, so we're really missing something big, right? Otherwise, we would be able to uh, do those things with uh, AI systems. 
Um, so we keep bumping into this thing called the Moravec paradox, which is that things that appear trivial to us that we don't even consider intelligent seem to be really, really difficult to do with machines. Uh, but like high level, complex, you know, abstract thinking like manipulating language seems to be easy for, for machines or things like playing chess and going. Next up is one of the most mind-blowing insights from Jan LeCun, brace yourself for this. He explains that our world models need way more data than we usually imagine. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Lacoon gives a jaw-dropping example if you took a large language model LLLM, it would take around 350,000 years for a human to read the same amount of data it's trained on at a pace of 250 words per minute. Wild, right? And here's where it gets even more interesting. While a human child is awake for around 16,000 hours in early development, these systems, despite massive training runs, still haven't seen as much data as a human or even some animals experience in real life. Every sight, sound, and interaction is data, and these biological systems are incredibly good at absorbing and processing it. So, this basically means we may think we have a ton of data, but when compared to real-world systems like humans, we're just scratching the surface. And if we want to build machines that can truly thrive, we'll need way more data. The big question is how on earth are we going to do that? Seems like paint chairs and rules and stuff like that. Okay, so maybe one reason for this is the following. Um, the, uh, an LLM is typically trained on 20 trillion tokens. Uh, a token is uh, basically zero, it's like three quarter of a word on average for a typical language. So that's 1.5, 10 to the 13 words. Um, each token is about three bytes, typically. So that six, 10 to the 13 bytes. It would take you know, on the order of a few hundred thousand years for any of us to read through this, right? That's the totality of all the text available publicly on the internet, essentially. Um, but then consider a human child. A human child, a four-year-old, has been awake a total of 16,000 hours, which by the way is 30 minutes of YouTube upload. Um, we have two million optical nerve fibers, uh, you know, optic nerve fibers coming to our, uh, to our brain. Each fiber roughly carries about one byte per second. Maybe it's one half byte per second. Um, some estimate has said it's, it's like three bits per second. Doesn't matter, it's an order of magnitude. So that data volume is about 10 to the 14 bytes. You know, roughly the same order of magnitude as the LLM. So in four years, a child has seen as much visual data, or data, as the biggest LLM trained on the entire publicly available text on the internet. So that tells you a number of things. That tells you, uh, first, that we're never going to reach anything close to human level intelligence by just training on text. It's just not going to happen. Um, then the counter argument is, OK, but visual information is very redundant. So first of all, this one byte per, per second per optic nerve fiber, that's already a 100 to 1 compression ratio compared to the photosensors you have in your retina. We have on the order of 60 to 100 million photosensors in our retina, and that gets compressed using neurons in front of your retina to 1 million nerve fibers. Uh, so there is a, already a 100 to 1 compression. Then it gets to the brain, and then it's expanded by a factor of 50 or something like that. Um, so I'm measuring a comp compressed information, but it's still very redundant. And redundancy actually is what self-supervised learning requires. Self-supervised learning will only learn something useful from redundant data. If the data is highly compressed, which means it's completely random, you can't learn anything. You need redundancy to be able to learn anything. You need to learn the underlying structure of the data. Um, so we're going to have to train systems to learn common sense and physical intuition by basically watching videos or by living in the real world. Next up, we dive into one of Yan LeCun's most groundbreaking ideas, objective-driven AI. This is the architecture that could be the key to unlocking artificial general intelligence AGI. LeCun's vision is radically different from the standard LMs we use today. It's a whole new system, a departure from basic if-then logic and reactive models. And trust me, he spends over 10 minutes breaking it down but let me give you a simplified version because honestly, it's mind-blowing. Unlike today's AI, which simply reacts to data by spotting patterns, think of how an LLM predicts the next word in a sentence, objective-driven AI is designed to think ahead. 
It imagines different future scenarios and makes decisions based on those imagined possibilities. This is a game changer. Why? Because instead of being limited to specific tasks, like filling in the blanks or recognizing patterns, this AI could tackle entirely new situations and still figure out how to achieve its goals even when it's never encountered that scenario before. And this is exactly where current AI systems hit a wall they struggle with navigating unfamiliar situations. Objective-driven AI could break that barrier wide open, pushing us toward truly adaptive, goal-seeking intelligence. So how exactly does objective-driven AI work? Well, it all starts with a world model essentially a mental map of how the world functions. The AI combines this world model with specific goals and objectives, optimizing its actions to achieve those goals. What makes this truly fascinating is that, instead of just following preset actions like sticking to a rigid script, objective-driven AI can adapt on the fly. It learns and adjusts based on real-time changes in the environment, much like how humans plan and react to new situations. To make it clearer, I've added this cool graph by Google Gemini that highlights the key differences between traditional LMMs and objective-driven AI. Now, what makes this talk so fascinating is how it tackles the future of AGI and advanced intelligences. Yan LeCun doesn't sugarcoat it, he says AGI isn't just around the corner. In fact, it's much further off than many might think. It's a complex challenge and it'll take many years to crack. This is particularly interesting given that just earlier this week, Demas Hassabi shared his belief that AGI could be at least 10 years away. On the flip side, other leaders in the industry are claiming that superintelligence or AGI could be just two to three years away. We're living in one of the most uncertain yet thrilling times in AI history when even the top minds in the field can't agree on when these breakthroughs will happen. What do you think? How far off is the future of AI really? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.